What's going on everyone? This is Impulse and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 6. Oh, don't I look nice. I am no longer covered in military gear. I am back in my normal skin and ready to get back to normal here on the Hermitcraft server. The war is over. Yeah, we may have lost, but we got a really cool rap song out of it, so I'm happy with the results for sure. If you guys haven't heard the, the rap that we, the Star Team put together, links are in the description. It's actually been remixed a few times by now, and I'll put links to those as well. Really cool, really cool. I've listened to it way too much, but uh, anyway, I wanted to show you what I've been working on. I'm back here in the trading hall, and my personal villager trading hall, that is, and I've been trying to figure out what I want to do with these shulker boxes on the ceiling. We talked about it before. I wanted to have access to shulker boxes that are above me as I'm trading, so I can basically trade, look up, grab something out of the shulker box, and then trade again and then once it's empty I wanted it to automatically kind of break off and go into my inventory basically so that I can uh, put it back to get filled back up with stuff so came up with a system here with a little help from a buddy of mine Draconis thanks buddy appreciate you sending me this but uh, it's pretty simple it just has an observer and it's detecting whether or not this shulker box, you can see it actually doesn't do anything when you open. But if I was to break it, it would sense that and then basically just put a signal up through back into the dropper. Or actually, it's a dispenser here, so it can shoot out the shulker box in its full state instead of just dropping it as an item. And then that's it. So what we need to do, I can't put a shulker box in a shulker box. Silly. There we go. <laughs> what we need to do is be able to fill these dispensers up with the right shulker boxes. And by right shulker boxes, I mean stuff that we care about, right? So this one, for instance, might have paper, just a shulker box full of paper. So I can trade with these librarians. Maybe if I come over here, the ones that are above this guy would have string and maybe coal as well, because we can fit a few in for the trading. Uh, go down a little bit more. We got a farmer here. This is probably going to be the best trading for emeralds that we can do with the wheat, the potatoes, the carrots, and also, I should feed in those pumpkins because I got the massive pumpkin farm now. Uh, probably won't do the wheat, actually. So, potatoes, carrots, and pumpkins could be kind of stationed around this guy. So, yeah, that's kind of the plan. Now, it's going to get fairly difficult. This part was easy, being able to detect, you know, the breaking of a shulker box and spitting a new one out. That's, that's pretty simple stuff, actually. But what's going to get difficult is how do we make sure what's in here waiting for us is what we want in the right spots. So uh, it's going to get complicated. But first, I need to finish installing all these guys all the way to the end of the hall there. I'm just going to go straight down this way and then straight down this way with them. So I got a lot of observers and dispensers and shulker boxes to place. One thing I didn't really consider was just how many shulker boxes I was going to need to make this work. And I've already come and bought out his undyed shulker boxes. And I guess I have no choice now. I mean, I could go to the end, of course, and get my own. But who's got time for that? I'm going to buy his dyed ones and just re-dye them to, all to white, probably. So what is it here? Two for eight. So I was getting a good deal over here. Two for six. So now I need to give him some more diamonds. Oh, my gosh. You're welcome, Python. All right, so I finally got all the shulker boxes in place all the way down, all dyed white. That was quite a bit, and I have, of course, some spares here that we're going to use to fill up with all the goodies so that we actually have replacement shulker boxes in each one of these dispensers. Of course, these are all going to need to be filled up with the item that we're going to want here. So now I actually need to figure out what am I putting in here. And I think, yeah, I think I'm going to stick to just paper for these librarians because usually you can trade enough paper and then if you need to unlock them if the paper locks up you can just use something else you can use an emerald uh, to buy some glass or bookshelves which is nice because you can break those down into books written books you can make those as well for good trades to help unlock them get some glass some other things so pretty much if we just have a nice supply of paper as you're trading i think you'll be able to get some other things and these are probably going to end up filling up with with junk the extra trade stuff basically so yeah that's kind of the plan here so pretty much all paper since it's going to be all librarians all the way down but this is the one that's going to get a little tricky because we have all sorts of different things we're going to want. We're going to want rotten flesh and gold. Uh, for these guys, we're going to want coal. 
coal probably for these guys and iron. Uh, what else? Same thing here. Yeah, we got different things about farmers and fletchers and things like that. So all sorts of different things kind of need to be scattered about here to help us with trading. And so trying to understand exactly how we are going to populate these dispensers with the right shulker box that we want here is going to be a bit of a challenge. And I think I have an idea for how we're going to do that. It's pretty complicated, so I'm going to just have to mock it up and see if it's going to work. All right, so that did get a little more complicated there than what we started with, and for good reason. There's a lot that we need to do, actually. We need to detect whether or not there's shulker boxes in the system, and every time you know we break one, we need to be able to get signal off of that to call for a new one to be loaded, all sorts of craziness, but you can see the power of observers going on here. This is pretty cool so you can see up there there's a redstone block basically just blocking that hopper so what I can do now is run a minecart rail over top of it to deliver a new shulker box anytime it's needed and how's it gonna know if it needs one well you can see when I break a shulker box here it pulls back that redstone block which means this hopper is now going to accept a new item into it and of course we're gonna send it a shulker box so yeah and then when it receives a new shulker box here actually go up there I'll drop one into the system that probably be a good idea if I can remember how to use ender pearls has been I don't I haven't been using ender pearls too much this season all right so we'll drop a new one in here you can see this one's unlocked right here if we throw one in it locks and then we'll go downstairs and see that it is also spit it out I'll go ahead and throw one in here as well to demonstrate the next one works as well these are tileable which is really cool so you can see they spit those directly out and then again if I remove one I'll remove this back one I guess uh, we'll see that that back one should have unlocked and there it is it's pulled it back so yeah now the next step of this is if our shulker boxes are customized to what we're trading with our villagers I lost a few villagers where did they go I wonder if a zombie got in while I was building this because I have had to open things up to build this? Oh my goodness, I think I lost a few. Oh, that's okay, these guys were just Fletchers anyway. But <laughs> if I, um, so how do we know that, you know, this shulker box full of string, because I had a Fletcher here, uh, once we break that off, how do we get it to deliver us a new shulker box full of string? See? See the zombies are still trying to get in? <laughs> and so that's going to be the next step. I need to create a system that's going to be aware of the type of shulker box that we broke so that it can call the shulker box storage system to deliver a same type of shulker box. So I got an idea on how I'm going to do that. Let me put that in place. Hopefully this works. Cross our fingers. All right, I think I got it figured out and it means we need to go even higher up with this redstone, but that's okay because I need to continue going higher up. I need to keep it no bigger than it is now this way so that I can fit another module in on this side as well and kind of keep this whole thing the way I need to keep it. So let's come up here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, actually, let me demonstrate it this way. Let's pretend, for instance, this is a carrot shulker box and I just ran out and so I need to break it and get a new carrot shulker box you know box filled with carrots um, so I'm gonna click that nothing comes out because it's got to go now fetch a box full of carrots for me and if I come up here the way we're gonna do that is you can see here I've shot out a single carrot right here and so this is gonna be my indicator of what I need to retrieve from the storage system and so the way I did that was basically just grab signal from this guy as it unlocks the hopper it's going to raise this observer up and that's going to trigger that dropper right there this is going to spit out some carrots so we'll need to fill this up if I fill this up with nine stacks of carrots you know that's that's you know however many nine times 64 whatever that comes to I'm not going to do math right now but it's that many times that I'll be able to use this thing before I have to worry about these droppers not having items in it but you can see it only spit out the carrots it didn't spit out the potatoes that might be next to it and then the key was to make sure that as a new shulker box came in it wasn't going to spit out another item and what you see this is such a quick pulse that it doesn't actually get anything Thing, uh, spit out of it so it still has all 64 carrots so that's perfect and then the same thing happens if we were to now go down and run out of the potato one we should see that unlock and instead of a carrot being spit out 
the dropper next to it should have spit out, there it is, a potato. And so we're gonna use these items right here as the indicator to our storage system that's holding all our shulker boxes full of goodies uh, as to what to send back, what we need to refill into the system. So it's kind of like our key card, I guess, if you will. So anyway, I gotta set that up and I've made it in a way that we could actually funnel all these items from both sides if I do like a water stream, like at this level right here, um, this would be the center area between the two systems here. So the system's gonna get built out one block here, and we have this nice one little slice in the middle that we can travel these items. And I probably will, I have enough hoppers, hoppers here, I'll probably get some water streams to carry it, see if I can save on a few hoppers around here because it is getting pretty intense already. But uh, anyway, I'll get all that in place and then we'll have to figure out how we're doing the retrieval method of the shulker box. Boxes. Okay, so things are starting to come along here quite nicely, and I wanted to show you this before I got too far on it, kind of explain how this is going to work. You can see here I've now got a wall on this back wall here that's going to tell me what these shulker boxes are holding in them. So this light is on because we do have in here a shulker box full of carrots, and you can see if I was to take that out, then that light would turn off, indicating that I need to put in more shulker boxes of carrots, which would be just up here. So I will put them up there. I probably will decorate this a bit, of course, to make it look much better. And you can see that light turns on. So now, if we put together our two systems, we had this system here that will eventually shoot out a carrot, right? So if I was to remove this shulker box because it was empty, I would eventually get a carrot spit out. And I need to connect that together with this new system. And basically the way it's gonna work is as we put in that same item that spit out up there, we're gonna bring it on over here and then we're gonna actually put it in here. And that's gonna go through a source sorting system back here and as this goes through when it reaches the sorter that has the carrot in it it's going to pull that in and just temporarily extend the signal out which turns this torch off and that's going to release that shulker box and so that'll go down this chain here all the way to the end and you can see we've got our shulker box with carrots in it that's sitting in this hopper so the next step is to actually put that <laughs> into a minecart and send it up there on top of all those guys and so that it would see that this hopper is unlocked right there and deliver that shulker box into the system and spit it back out. I'm not sure how long that whole thing's gonna take, but I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, we need to do all the connection things. I'm gonna, I have this waterway here that is spitting all the items that are telling us what we need to get delivered. I need to connect that up into this sorter, like I said, and then I need to get the output of this dumped into a minecart and brought up on top with a bunch of rails and things like that so that they can be distributed. So it's gonna have to go up, make its loop around all the hoppers, eventually this side as well. I got a lot more to build out here. I gotta build this whole system on this side as well. Unfortunately, I'm running out of quartz, so these observers take a fair bit of quartz and there's a lot of observers in this mix. So yeah, I'm probably gonna have to either between episodes or maybe during next episode do a, a quartz run to the nether because I did check the shopping district and unfortunately nobody is selling quartz, which is a, a bummer. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're gonna have to go manually gather it. It's looking like so. Anyway, let me get that connected up. It is going to take me a bit of time to get that all going. I'll get it connected up and hopefully we can at least see these first few slices in action today. All right, so I finally got the minecart system in, the hopper minecart system that's going to be responsible for delivering this shulker box, this new shulker box that comes into it, to the system to dispense for you to use as you're trading. And here's how I've got it set up. Got the hopper minecart kind of up into this hopper here, and this is gonna deliver the shulker box to it. Once it does, this is sitting on a, a uh, what are they called, a pressure plate track, the detector rail, that's the one. And it's going to get detected that it has an item in it through this comparator, and that's gonna detract this piston, which right now is holding it back because of this fence. So you can see if I put an item in here, the shulker box, you should see that take off. There it goes, and it's gonna start heading off and up to the loader system, so we'll give it a, a follow here, and uh, 
I don't have the system all the way done. Let me grab that out of there so it stops. And then, yeah, it's going to make its way around. You can see all the hoppers right now are locked. I've made sure that I've put shulkers in place on all the systems. I'm not done with that side just yet. As I mentioned, I don't have enough quartz to finish it out. So I've got this looping just back through for now. And it's going to go through all the ones that we have done on this side and back around. And, of course, the reason why it still had this in it is because they're all locked at the moment. And then after it's done making its loop, it's going to finish off here. Since I got in its way, we'll go ahead and push it through. And it falls down. And then when it falls down, it actually returns back to its little dock right here, which is perfect. So it kind of slides underneath this fence, starts to go up, and then gets caught by this, this uh, fence post again. So we're going to go ahead and give this thing an actual test now that that is done. And hopefully it will work. So yeah, I'm going to go back down here. And we will trade for, I guess, we will do the carrots. They seem to be in stock. So uh, this is the one I've got loaded, the dropper up here with carrots in, just this first bay right here, of course. I can choose what's in each bay by choosing what drops out of the droppers up top. So I can get up there and, and change the configuration as I swap villagers out, which is pretty cool. So all right, we'll pretend this is the carrot thing, and we should see a carrot dispense out of here, and then, yeah. Uh, let's see, it might take some time before the cart goes around. Oh, there the light turned off, so it dispensed that shulker box. And I heard something get released. Sounds like the cart's going around. There it goes. And that should then drop it into, there it is, right there. And there is our new shulker box. Oh, well, not quite full, but with carrots in it anyway. And then if we were to start doing this one, which I believe was set with potatoes, the whole system would start again. And I do have a couple shulker boxes of potatoes in the system. So the light's not going to turn off, but it should make its way through the system. And any moment, there goes the cart. We should see it come up. And it's going to go around and about and eventually drop. There it is. Our potatoes right in place. How cool is that? We have an on-demand shulker box retrieval system. Took quite a bit of redstone and tampering with to get it all working. But that is super cool. Now I can replace things as needed. Let's see. We can do one more. Uh, let's see. Do I have pumpkins? Oh, but I didn't set the pumpkins to shoot out of the droppers just yet. So I got to get all that stuff filled. I need to get all the rest of these bays done, basically. Continue to get the villagers in here. I got a few more items I need to put in here. I think I'm going to do uh, iron and what else? I can't even remember. But I have a couple more items I can put in here for trading as well, which is going to be cool. But uh, yeah, this took a lot of time to figure out, and I am super happy with how it turned out. It is working fantastically. Wow, wow, that was a project and a half. But before we go today, uh, I've been told by Iskol that he's got a new shop open in the shopping district, and he also mentioned that the earlier I get in on it, the better off I would be. So I better not waste any time. I'm gonna get over there and take a look and see what he's got going on. All right, flying into the shopping district, and right away I see something new over here. It looks like we have a big beacon looking thing on the ground. And yep, this must be it. The Beacon Limited Stock. I know Iskall has been working on a massive Wither Skelly farm. And he had to place like 50,000 buttons or something crazy like that to help stop sp spawning from around it so it would get good rates. And I know he worked super hard on that. So I'm assuming the farm is done and must be getting some good stuff from it. You know, Wither Skulls, which uh, I'm sure he's turning into beacons, as it looks like. So let's see what he's got going on. Oh, he actually has an ender chest, so I didn't need to bring my valuable box with me. I could have trusted that. Good idea. Let's see here. All right, so we have, this is interesting, we have row one, 20 diamonds a piece, okay, row two, 30 diamonds a piece, and row three, 40 diamonds a piece. Okay, so as stock sells, basically, the price goes up, unless somebody wants to just be weird and generous and start at row three and work their way backwards or something, uh, but we can get a beacon for 20 diamonds each. Okay, and let's see, it would be nice to have like 
five beacons going in the base so that you pretty much have everything. I don't know if I can afford that right now. Um, we spent a lot of diamonds at Python's shop today. I do have a few blocks left so we can I don't know I guess we can we can spend a little bit here I can I can afford that so for, for 20 diamonds each uh, we can right now get uh, that's one right there two and then if we split these up we can go I can I afford five with this if I can afford five I might buy five that's pretty good pretty good oh close all right I'm going to buy four Yes, five. We got it. <laughs> right there. I'm going to buy five. So that's a pretty good deal then. One, two, three, four, five. And I could have actually used this uh, in my base as I was digging out all that room for the, the tr shulker box system because I had to dig a lot of space out for that as we went up. So I definitely could have used these beacons. So five beacons. I spent a hundred diamonds. Wow. I um. I was feeling pretty rich when we started this episode, but right away I am pretty much broke again. I mean, eh, I guess that's not too bad. And look at I had four beacons just sitting here. I didn't know that. Oh, Tango must have given those to me on live stream. And I totally forgot about them. Well, we got nine beacons now. We should definitely make sure we get those set up around the base to help us out with all, all the beacon effects. That'll be great. So I should I should run over real quick and check iTrade. Now that I've I've spent all those diamonds, maybe we can get some of them back if people have been doing some shopping at iTrade. All right, before we go to iTrade, we'll check GoldenEye here. We'll see if anybody's bought any gold. Yep, looks like a little bit has sold there. And are people using... The golden carrots a little bit so we got five diamonds back i got a feeling we're not going to get all hundred diamonds that we just spent back but let's take a peek inside of i trade i did have this pretty well stocked recently so nobody's buying sugarcane anymore oh oh okay <laughs> so there we go we got 40 more diamonds that's nice and i'm going to have to do some grinding for emeralds again oh my goodness somebody bought all my emeralds out yeah, all right, one more in there it looks like, and that's it. So, all right, 46 diamonds back. Not bad, not bad. I only really spent, what, 56, 54 diamonds today? Uh, well, minus all the shulker boxes, which, by the way, Python, <laughs> he did tell me that he was going to restock it again so I could buy even more. And I said, you know what, man, I'm pretty broke from buying all the first ones, but I am going to need more shulker boxes. So, oh, yep, he's starting to fill them back up. All right, well, I'm tempted to buy them now, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I actually need them. I need to start filling up all those empty ones I bought with the goods for the trading system so that every single storage unit basically will have something waiting for it and I can get to trading. Obviously, I need to get to trading because people are buying those emeralds like crazy, and that's how we make our diamonds back. So it all works out in the end, I guess. But yeah, that's going to do it for me today, guys. That was a big project. I had a lot of fun with it. Nice to get back into some redstone. It had been a while. I was definitely rusty. This took a lot longer than I anticipated, but we got a working system in the end, and I'm super happy with it. Hopefully, as Scar goes flying by, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe before you go. And with that said, I'll see you guys again next time. Have a good one, everyone.